In the depths of mythology and biblical lore, there exists a chilling tale of four horsemen who ride forth to unleash destruction upon the world. These riders, known as the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, are said to bring about the end of days with their fearsome powers and deadly missions. But who are these mysterious figures? What do they represent, and why do they exist? Join us on a journey into the unknown as we explore the legends and lore surrounding the Four Horsemen and unravel the secrets of their dark and foreboding prophecy. From war and famine to death and pestilence, the Four Horsemen stand ready to ride. Are you prepared to face them? Well, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse are mentioned in three primary books of Christian mythology, Zechariah, Ezekiel, and the Book of Revelation by John of Patmos in the New Testament. In chapter 6 of Revelation, John speaks of a scroll in the right hand of God that has been sealed with seven individual seals. As the Lamb of God, which is a title given to Jesus Christ, opens the first four of these seven seals. Four beings emerge, each riding a different colored horse, white, red, black, and pale. Although only death is named in the Bible, the other riders are identified by what they represent. This leads us to question if Jesus himself is opening these seals and unleashing the apocalypse upon humanity that has been ordained by God, or is it a future punishment for humanity's actions? The first rider appears as the horseman of conquest dressed in white. According to the Bible, this rider emerges when the Lamb breaks one of the seven seals, signaling the beginning of the end of times. The Horseman of Conquest has been interpreted in various ways throughout history, with some believing that his purpose was to spread the word of God across the land. The color white, which the horseman is dressed in, represents purity, Christ, and righteousness in the Bible, making it a fitting choice for the first of the four horsemen. However, interpretations of the Horseman of Conquest have not always been positive. In the mid-19th century, some believed that this rider represented something closer to the Antichrist and was not to be seen as a positive figure. Regardless of differing interpretations, the Romans saw the Horseman of Conquest as a symbol of triumph, political success, and prosperity, despite not being associated with Christ or religion. In recent times, the Horseman of Conquest has also been thought to symbolize infectious disease, the bringer of plague, adding to the eerie mystery of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Although war and conquest are often linked, the Horseman of Conquest is not necessarily seen as a symbol of war, with some interpreting his role as more focusing on the spread of religion or even political power. Whatever the interpretation, the Horseman of Conquest remains a compelling and mysterious figure in Christian mythology, representing the beginning of the end of times and the arrival of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. The second horseman, the Rider in Red, is one of the most straightforward of the Four Horsemen, as he's associated with war, bloodshed, and the destruction that comes with conflict. Riding on a fiery red horse with a great sword held upwards, the horseman of war is an ominous sight as the upward-facing sword signifies his intent to enter battle. The color red is commonly associated with blood and war, making it the apt choice for this horseman. The horseman of war and blood symbolizes a form of war that seeks to gain control through military force, often to spread a particular ideology or religion even to those who don't share the same beliefs. Scholars have interpreted the horsemen of war as representing civil war based on the passage that reads, It was granted to take peace from the earth and that men would slay one another. This interpretation is particularly relevant to the Roman Empire as the breaking of the second seal meant peace left Rome, resulting in civil unrest, bloodshed, and insurrection in the empire. Commodus, the Roman emperor, is often associated with this period of unrest as his reign marked the end of the golden era of Rome and the beginning of a period of civil strife. While the horseman of the conquest is associated with the success of Rome, the horseman of war represents the decline of the empire as peace is replaced by conflict and turmoil. Overall, the second horseman is a powerful symbol of the destructive power of war, whether it takes the form of civil unrest or conquest. The third horseman, known as the Black Rider and the Horseman of Famine, is depicted in the Book of Revelation riding on the back of a black horse and holding a pair of scales in his hand. Some believe that the scales represent the scales of justice, while others believe they reflect how bread used to be weighed in times of famine. The latter interpretation is more commonly used given the mention of barley and wheat in the passage, which indicates the horseman is bringing a famine upon the land. 
While the prices mentioned in the passage roughly translate to an entire day's work just to buy some of the ingredients to make bread, making it clear why they would cause a famine. Interestingly, the price of oil and wine, which were luxuries out of the price range of a common worker, remained untouched. This can be taken literally as a plague of locusts could easily ravage crops, but grape vines and olive branches were more resistant. If the horseman is bringing this famine as punishment, then going after the necessities such as wheat and barley, which offer little resistance but are of grave importance, makes sense. The third horseman and the rising costs of essential goods within the Roman Empire can be seen as a symbol of the excessive taxation imposed on the Roman citizens. The rich continued their lavish lifestyles while everyone else struggled just to feed their families. The passage makes it clear that the black horseman is a symbol of the suffering and deprivation that comes with famine, and his appearance signifies a time of great hardship and scarcity. The fourth and final horseman, also known as Thanatos, is often depicted with a sickly appearance and is typically associated with the color green in artistic interpretations. In the Book of Revelation, the voice of the fourth living creature summons the pale horse and its rider, Death, who is accompanied by Hades. This passage states that Death and Hades were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill with swords, famine, pestilence, and wild beasts. While Death is given the authority to kill, Hades is responsible for receiving the souls of the deceased. Scholars interpret this passage as describing the end of the Roman Empire, which had already suffered from years of warfare, famine, and oppression. The fact that the passage mentions death being able to kill with a sword, famine, and pestilence suggests that all four horsemen are involved in the empire's dissolution. Ultimately, death marks the end of the empire and the beginning of a new era. The four horsemen have been interpreted in various ways, including as a prophecy of the Great Tribulation, a series of judgments from God that caused many on earth to die. Those who repented for their sins and accepted him as their savior would form a new world with those who remained faithful. Moreover, the horsemen were the first of these many judgments, with the first seal being broken signifying the arrival of the Antichrist, followed by global war, economic collapse, and the death of a quarter of the world population. While the Book of Zechariah presents a different approach to the four horsemen, here they're known as four spirits who descend from heaven on chariots, each with a different colored horse. Unlike in Revelation, their role in Zechariah is not to bring the apocalypse, but rather to patrol the earth and maintain peace. Therefore, the account in Zechariah is almost the opposite of Revelation. We hope that the information provided has helped to illuminate the significance and meaning of the four horsemen as described in the book of Revelation and other related texts. Well, that's all for today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can be notified about our next videos. Trust me, you don't want to miss any of that.